And I had a fair number of conversations with his family while Tony was asleep, and they were very adamant. Tony is active guy. He wants to move. We're gonna do everything we can to save that. And, and so we had some good productive talks early on, and I altered my plan a little bit because of that. When we had questions, and we had a lot of questions, <laughs> he, he would sit with us and try to explain them, and that, that was very, very much appreciated. The challenges is at this point was because his medical stability, we had to work around positioning to um, prevent contractures, limitations of movement when he was at bed rest. Tony's um, wound care sometimes took one hour, two hours. It's a daily process of taking off old dressings, washing, putting on new dressings, and that's the most painful part. Even though we gave pain medicine, nothing, you know, takes away all the pain. You know, I know he's not going to be totally comfortable, but just making sure that he's comfortable and noticing that he's grimacing or whatever, you know, and stop when need be. They said, don't pay attention to the monitors. We're the ones that will take care of that. You just, you know, care for your son, tell him that you're, you're there, comfort him. Um, we did learn uh, what some of the equipment was for, and as the pieces gradually disappeared from the room, we started feeling better. Dr. Feldman kept saying we have to get skin on him first, and that was our biggest priority. Until his wounds are ready for his own skin, we use temporary skin, and that gives us the time to remove, safely remove all the bad skin until he's ready for his skin. We brought him back to the operating room, sometimes several times a week, to, to remove skin from places that weren't burned and put him on places that had gone through excision and were prepared using the temporary skin. We started with the basic things like setting Tony up on the side of the bed, if he could tolerate that, and then moving from that to standing, and then from standing to walking. Once Tony started walking and started doing things that people didn't think he could do or were uncertain about, it just, it was just more of a relief and then what we did was follow a plan of care that we worked on specifics like fine motor, being able to dress yourself again, you know, things that you would think would come naturally. But if you don't have your fingers and it's on your right hand, which is dominant, it's very difficult to do. So finding compensatory ways to doing things. We had a lot of discussions about his appearance and uh, um, what his trajectory would be even once he was better and back home. and. Um, sort of what to expect with reconstruction and things like that. He'd come back from a grafting surgery and his arms were splinted. You know, he couldn't eat, of course, by himself and we would have to help him with, with eating and with, you know, basic hygiene and all the things that, you know, a 25-year-old doesn't want their family helping them with. And so I think dealing with the frustrations, you know, reminding him this is just a step. You know, we will get through this step together and, and it will be better. Tony pushed as soon as he could. He got out of bed. He pushed himself. He worked with therapy. He made a lot of progress in a very short amount of time. From day one, he always had the positive, let's do it. You know, let, I'm not afraid to do it. Even then, let's work through the pain. We were motivated. He consistently talked about, you know, getting out of here and what he got to do. You, you couldn't get a better patient, a more compliant patient, someone who really is making a decision in their own interest and who's really going to follow through on what they say. Very positive about everything, um, even after he left, knowing that he still will have to come back for a couple of, of you know, surgeries to kind of contour his nose. He just left out of here, just happy to have the first step done. When Tony first came in, he needed a lot of help. He was requiring a lot of help to stand up. He needed two people to walk, and he walked about 20 feet the first day. His elbows were tight, his knees were tight, his back was tight, his face was tight, everything. You know, he was missing some fingers. Um, he was dealing with a lot of pain. We couldn't just handle Tony the way we normally would help a person because we couldn't risk his skin tearing. Tony wanted to work from the moment he woke up until the moment he went to sleep. He never complained. He never asked why me. He was always asking, what can we do today? What can we do next? I think that Tony and his family felt that we were all a team and we were all working together. It wasn't just now I'm having OT, now I'm having PT. It was just kind of my rehab experience. Yeah, this is the whole experience. He's always been in great spirits, even when he came in for his nasal reconstruction. He really wanted a permanent tissue solution. 
And in order to do that for him, we had to be frank and let him know that this is a very unusual situation to try to do this in. The reconstruction really involved replacing three structures on his nose, the inner lining, the support structure of the nose, and then the outer skin. So to, to do that, we had to rely on skin of his forehead and the dorsum of his nose that had been previously burned and skin grafted. I can't tell you enough how Dr. Rhodes was instrumental in helping me put this together. The future is very bright for us. Um, Tony still stay, staying in aviation. He actually went and got his dispatching license. For him, it's made him a stronger person. It's made him more aware of his capabilities. There were a lot of folks uh, just getting him to the point to give him a fighting chance, and uh, you know we're forever grateful to all of them. I know one of them in, that was in the ambulance, uh, Vernon told me that he'd gone to training just the day before on the special access that they needed for Tony. And he thought about, oh, he didn't want to go, he's been to this training before, but he went for the refresher and then, you know, he just needed he it, used it. <laughs> that very next day. So a lot of things fell into place. It took a multidisciplinary team to, to get Tony to where he is today. When I see him, we're like family. We hug and we talk about how things are going and he's, he has a plan to improve his strength his mobility, his speed when he's running, uh, the guys bench pressing. You know, I have to tell him to slow down, slow down. I don't want to tell anybody else that. I think we've kind of come to a certain piece about it. That unfortunate it happened, but now we have information that we can share. I consider Thanksgiving my biggest holiday now. You know, we have so much that we're, we're thankful for.